what's up, everybody? This is your girl, CC with Where It Begins Magazine, and I got my co-host, Theo, on the line. Hey, Theo, how are you? I'm good, CC. How are you? I, I'm good. I'm good. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. We're back again for another edition, Where It Begins. Yes, yes. Well, we got two special guests with us today, so we're going to let them introduce their stuff or who they are, what they do, where they from. Which one of y'all want to go first? I know, you go. <laughs> it, is, it is my birthday. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go first. <laughs> hey, yo, what's going on, y'all? My name is Tyler King J. Jackson. I'm an actor, director, um, all around creative. I do cinematography, um, videography, photography. Um, I'm an activist. Um, I'm also very involved in the NAACP in Charlotte, uh, along with a whole bunch of other nonprofit organizations. But that's a little bit about me. And hi, my name is Praise Colleen McNeely. I am a writer, actor, and songwriter. Um, I'm from New York. I live in Charlotte. I'm based out of Charlotte now. Um, but yeah, I'm just into everything creative, directing, cinematography, just everything. And um, yeah, that's, that's just a little bit about me. That's dope. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so tell us how y'all got started and what made y'all want to, you know, get into filming and being a director? Man. Well, <laughs> um, what got me started was I started at a, a young age, I would say like 10, but what really oh. got me into it was high school theater. And high school theater led me to Tyler, which we met at ITF, Inspired to Fire. Um, so when we met there, it was kind of just like a click. It was just a brotherhood. And it was just, we knew basically that this both, we was both interested in this. Um, and then when I left Inspired to Fire, I just got really on the grind with high school theater and just loving everything about the art of acting and just doing my own thing, Monologue Mondays on Instagram and just, just, just putting myself out there knowing that I have like short and resources. So it was like, I just, I just had, I just had to go get it. And that's, that's what got me into everything. And then when we did the movie, uh, when I started writing the movie at 16, Loverboy, when I started writing Loverboy at 16, I hit up Tyler and I was like, yo, like, let's get it. It was my birthday actually. And Tyler was like, yo, I'm gonna send you something. And I was like, yo, I need you. I need you for this, for this new project. And we've been locked in ever since we, been on this journey. I, I started writing at 16, we started filming at 17, and we're gonna release it. I'm 18 now. So yeah, we 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 definitely get into it. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Um <laughs> that's amazing. That does amazing story, brother. Brought tears to my eyes right now. You know what I'm <laughs> it's my birthday today. That's great. Yeah, I go, right? <laughs> but um yeah, I started it, man. I, I honestly just loved the crab. Like um I never got into it. For the art, the funny thing is that I love what the art gave, and it gave an emotion that you just can't duplicate or replicate. Being from Charlotte, North Carolina, like um, just creating your own opportunity type of thing and understanding that it's not a big city. It was more about the love and always about the love. So, yeah, that's why I got into it, just for the love of it. And um, a big moment in my life that made me realize I loved it was when I was a little kid and I was um, at a funeral and I seen um, some older people crying and um um, I just went and I really loved Michael Jackson at the time and I just started dancing, like doing a like, thriller, thriller tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> started making them laugh <laughs> as like a little kid. And like, I didn't think nothing of it, but my mom, when we got back to the car, she said like, you know, that really um, changed their day. Like somebody very important to them died that day. I don't, I don't know if you understand how, how how much that helped them through that day. And I was just like, ever since then, I was just glued to the arts. And then we got getting into high school. Um, I met Dennis Reed Jr. on the CEO of Inspired the Fire, and it just went off from there. And I never thought that the arts could be my career until then, you know what I'm saying? Because so many things had happened to where I, I failed so many times, but you know what they say, you got to get back up. And um, I was um, able to get back up. <laughs> but um yeah so i met Dennis Jr. and then um i met praise through that and then once we started clicking up you know we didn't talk on and off like a, a whole like year but then um it was his birthday and i just wanted to send him some love because that's how we do you know itf is a family and, and and that was my brother even regardless of who we talking a lot or not and then he asked me to be a part of um lover boy 
And long story short, I had a camera and somebody else fell through. And, you know, when somebody dropped a baton, you got to pick it back up. And now we're completing the race. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> while we're talking about it, let's go into Loverboy. Tell us what this film is all about. Okay. So Loverboy is basically about your first time getting your heart broken. And it, it confronts you with the question, like, do you want to continue to be a lover boy or a lover girl or just be a lover at the end of the day or do you want to start breaking hearts it's like it 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 confronts you with everything and it's such a true story that we all had to go through that it's just, that it's just it captivates you because it's 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 so funny but the story underneath it is just like you never really want to just uh address a topic just right there head on you want to always bring a funny little twist to it and you want to give a comedic relief because it's like it's it's not a drama but it is it is a comedy and it is funny but it is a story underneath that and it it just shows you toxic masculinity and where it's like grow up you need to grow a pair man up you don't need to be crying you don't need to be crying over this one girl and it shows you that like you get kind of love crazy where you block out everybody else for this one thing and you're not listening to the right people. When everybody's telling you, no, don't do it, you say, yes, I'm gonna do it anyway. So it's like, you really just watch it and you're like, oh my gosh, like I remember being 16, 17, going through this and going through anxiety or emotions and depression over one thing. And it is a really beautiful story, you know, like, I just, I just can't wait for it to drop and just be out. It really makes me excited. And just watching it and being with Tyler the whole time and just him having my back through everything and being with the other guys, shout out to Mars, Ali, Enoch. They just sat there and was like, yo, we're going to make this happen regardless. Like there were some days where we had to come back and reshoot. And it was just like where the, the objective and the goal was we're going to do this. And that's, what I want people to see, and that's basically what it's about. It's just like, you're going through one thing and it's a whole bunch of other things. It's people saying, yo, don't do that. Yo, don't, 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 don't do this. But it's, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a story that we can all relate to. I, I really appreciate that about love. Yeah. It's about, as cliche as it may sound, it's about love, you know, and getting deeper <laughs> into that. It's about platonic love and it's about romantic love. And it's about the, complexities of love even in the simpler times because even when any of simple times where love seems like it, it all works out it's always those moments of complexity that that come back around it's about comedy it's about laughter it's about you know you know struggle it's about heartbreak it's about friendship it's there's something for somebody in this it's about um struggling with loss huh. struggling with the fact that listen our minds are are, are complex and in a high school it's probably the most complex it's ever going to be in your whole life because so many things are coming at you so fast and these are four years that are so compact and so meaningful and can really set you up for the best of your life or mm. a downward spiral to be in the worst of your life and that's the setting of it in high school kids trying to make it trying to understand just um, trying to figure it out. yeah trying to figure it out Okay. And through 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 everything, they keep on moving and they keep on going because kids make mistakes. And regardless of the mistake, are you gonna stay down for the count or are you gonna get back up? And it's a it's a story about getting back up. And I encourage everybody to definitely look for that deeper meaning in themselves as they watch through the movie. But yeah, shout out to Sadverse too, because our soundtrack is dope. Soundtrack yeah, soundtrack is, is amazing. It's um, amazing. It's definitely amazing. We um Sadverse is basically like a collective and it's your actors, your producers, your 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 music, your your songwriters, your singers. It's just a, it's just an amazing collective that they we did the soundtrack. We we did every single song for the movie. So you know it, it's it's definitely it's, it's we all a, a a bunch that's just amazingly talented. Shout out to the nucleus too. It's just definitely a bunch that's amazing. That's dope. Obviously, that message yeah. of love is something that that can resonate with with everybody. So you you pretty much tied a lot of people in uh, when when you said that. Uh, the bu the buzzwords though that I took took away from that, and I'm gonna come back to it in a second, is that toxic masculinity. 
Uh, that seems to be coming from from both genders these days. But but real quick, uh, stepping to the side, tell us about the cast. Uh, how how did the cast come together? What was it like kind of working with the cast on this project? Um, so we actually have a really funny story about the cast. Um, oh, no. When we <laughs> when we first started casting, I was like, "Yo, I want to go out and be able to like." I want people to send it in. Like, I want this to be the big thing that I've been that I've been dreaming about in my head, basically. So we go out and we cast, and okay. we, we 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 cast we cast um, someone for our lead girl, and it, it just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't right. Like, it just didn't feel right. Mm. The, the the it just didn't it it, it didn't click. It was, it was no it was no chemistry, basically. <laughs> you know? But then the glue didn't stick. Yeah, good is at all. <laughs> but then we started working with the amazing Sierra Reynolds, and Sierra is actually a good friend of me and Tyler. Um, she just like opened our eyes one day, and it was like when when my my dad actually seen her, and he was like, "Yo, why isn't she playing the 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 lead girl role? Why isn't y'all Why don't y'all cast her?" And I was like, "We already cast somebody." But then, luckily unluckily <laughs> for, for the other person. Something fell through for that other person that we casted. And so we ended up casting Sierra Reynolds for the lead girl part. And she just did amazing and she blew it out of the water. Um, for the dad, we uh, casted Jermaine Gamble. He's my acting coach and he was amazing. When you guys see it, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, like that that's definitely how a dad would act. And just like, just wondering why you don't man up and just stop crying about situations that you can't handle. So yes, and then Tyler was casted as my best friend and I play David, the main character, lover boy. <laughs> and it, the casting is definitely, we all had chemistry and we all did what we had to do to make it right. Yep, from the actor side, it's an all African-American cast. So okay. definitely put it on your um, Black Stories Radar watch, man. Black Stories Radar watch. <laughs> Good stuff. Drop the website real quick. Tell them where they can kind of see the previews and information that you guys are putting out about the project. Okay. The, the website will be um, www.loverboardthemovie.com. Um, and we are dropping the movie in May. We, we, just, we just announced that we are dropping the movie in May. So it will be on the website in May. And you can go to my Instagram at Praise McNeely and see just the little previews. And when the trailer comes out, you'll see the trailer. You can go to Tyler's Instagram. And yeah, it's Sadverse and Loverboy the movie on Instagram too. Drop your Instagram, Tyler. Oh yeah, gotta drop it, gotta drop it, gotta drop it. My Instagram is Tyler King Jace Jackson. Um, T-Y-L-E-R-K-I-N-G-J-A-C-E-J-A-C-K-S-O-N. Hopefully yeah. That right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds, sounds like it was a dope process putting all these uh, parts together. But let's let's get back to 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 this toxic masculinity. What oh, yeah. what what is the what is the message coming out? What what does the character learn, uh, or, or how does it kind of play in? Uh, more importantly, I want to know how y'all gonna teach people to deal with it because it seems to be rising up these days. Yeah, um, dealing with it, I would say just everyone just taking a better approach to attack it and just not be like, man, that's, 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 that's that stuff is for a girl or that's the crying is that you just need to block out all your emotions. I can't lie. This story is based on a true story about myself. So it's like with my dad facing my dad with that issue or just being like, yo, like, so at some times when I wanted to talk and when I wanted to just get, take a walk and, and, clear my mind it was it was to you it was oh I'm I, I need to grow a pair or to you it was just it was waved off so as as such as anxiety or depression in a, in a black household because you, can, you can't lie that is sometimes how it is rubbed off and it's just like uh like you, you're not sad you just you just not in a good mood right now you're not you're not this you just whatever but with the toxic masculinity it's you, you approach it differently. You talk about your feelings. And as a man, I feel as if you should definitely be open to talking because I, I feel like a lot of us keep everything that we ever dealt with in. And then when somebody says something about it or when somebody checks you on it, then it's like, it's just a, 
a, a lash out and I'm just lashing at you and I'm not I'm not talking I'm not being down with my feelings I'm not I'm not I'm not mentally right so when you talk about me in a certain way I'm just lashing at you and it's 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 more than a it's more than a grow up or you need to man up it's more than that it's because you definitely see toxic masculinity in everything like as a, as a man you just you never really want to feel like you're doing too much of that because once you're doing too much of that you're not you're not tapped into who you truly are mm. hey, to, that's just to me <laughs> that, that's definitely me yeah. but I, but i'm a man praise i'm a man i'm not gonna cry <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna talk about my feelings i don't need to put it out there like that i'm hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure and, and it's like i always preach like you got to be able to talk about it regardless if you're a man if you're a woman you got to be able to talk about it you always you always want to be up front with your feelings and you always want to be just there because nobody's nobody if you're screaming and yelling who's listening to you who nobody's listening they're, they're just watching your actions and they're just being like okay he's just he's screaming and yelling i ain't, I ain't paying attention to that but if i can sit you down and be like yo this is what hurt me da -da -da -da, da -da -da. it's just what you have to do to be a better human you have to talk communication is definitely key and that's how you get past a lot of things because people don't realize once you just talk about it, it's, it's you realize that it's not as deep. It's not as a big situation as you thought it was. Yeah. No, I, I definitely uh, support that. Um, I believe mental health mm -hmm. uh, is something that we need to have more conversations about and it affects a lot of different areas of our life. Uh, and, and you're right. The energy that people put out uh, with, with that, with that toxicity sometimes, uh, and, and 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 like I said, I take it male and female. I see it coming from from both parts. Everybody everybody wants to have that machismo uh, these days. Everybody's the best. Everybody's the hardest. Nothing you know, no kinks in the armor. So trying to keep that up twenty four hours a day, I think it I think it leaves a lot of residues on on people's mental, and you start to see that that spill over. So definitely glad that you guys are are bringing it out. Uh, you know, bringing it to a subject of love that everybody can take a basis off of. Um, when you guys were kind of thinking of what you wanted to do um, with your project, obviously y'all are close. How did you come about and how did you figure you want to tackle this particular subject? Um, yeah. you go to that. Well, yeah. me, me coming in, um, I write as well, but I did not have a hand in the writer's um, pocket. But I knew that for me coming in, that this is a <laughs> totally new space for us. Like we've never done a movie before. Like this is our first time ever doing anything like this, especially my, 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 my first time um, doing that. And um, me having the camera, it was more so like wearing the hats. What can I do as a cinematographer to make this look and come off as authentic as I possibly can make it, you know? Um, so that was my, my hat and bringing in the guys, of course, Ali, um, Enoch and Mars, um, that was our job. That was the, that was a lot of their, their job too. Make, making sure that everything that's on on screen comes off authentically, and from the director's standpoint, um, being comfortable enough with each other so we can be vulnerable enough to bring this story to the best light and to and bring it out to the best of our ability. So to answer your question in terms of that, okay. we had many talks. We we meet up at least once a week, um, just just to talk about things that we're doing and what's going on and editing and, and, and in that process and knowing that we took our time very methodical in terms of it took a whole year for, for us to edit this thing man it's, it, it, was, yeah. it, was, it was beautiful a struggle of a process but at the end of the day we're going to be so much better for everything else that we do so um just learning the ins and out of the um, process um learning how to elevate our shooting process learning how to elevate the lights and put it into those different perspectives learning that okay, if we're going to do this movie, then we got to put it in this perspective, knowing that, okay, we need a little bit more practice in terms of our, running our lines, um, knowing that we need to call each other, you know, so we can't get to each other to, to do the line. So through it all, I would say that us two especially, we went into the intrinsic nature of getting down to the bare bones of what we need to do for the project and then allowing to add in the vegetables and the meat to make a, a jambalaya of everything and add it all in <laughs> to make something special. Yeah, yeah definitely. And <laughs> when I first I, when I first started writing at 16, it was it was different for me. We just 
had gotten to COVID. I was just getting out of a relationship. So it, I was moving so quick to where that sat me down and it was like, okay. And it like that, it goes to shows like everything happens for a reason. So when I was writing the pro when the process of writing came about, it was so crazy for me because I'm going through what my character is going through in real time. So there's some yeah. days where I'm the writing team up and I'm like, yo, I cannot write today. Or I can't, y'all need to carry this, y'all need to carry this for me. Cause it's just, it's too much. Like it, it, that's one thing that I will say about this, this project and going deeper into my feelings. I talked to Tyler when we was creating the trailer. I was so, I was, I wasn't mad, but I definitely had an attitude when we did the trailer. Cause it's like, this version of myself keeps reliving. And I know that I'm out of this and I know that I'm way past, far past gone. Like at some, when we watched the movie, trying to write down notes, I'm not, I'm waving the movie off. I don't, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to see myself go through this again. So it's like, when, when we do the trailer, it's like, I got an attitude. And I, I, I said, sorry to everybody on, on set that day. Cause it was just like, yo, reliving this is so real. And that's what people don't get. And that's what people, are, I want people to understand. It's like, this is a story and we are trying to tell a story, but it is so real. You can relate. That's the biggest thing is that I related to this and everybody I, we've shown the movie to is like, yo, this is relatable. This is definitely something that I can relate to. So with the writing process and how we came about it all, it was just like, it was me. So I knew how to write me. I knew how to write my dad. I knew how to write my best friend. I knew how to write the girl. And it was, it was definitely just something that was beautiful. It was, it was, it, it showed us that we need to be closer to each other to share more information, to just get each other to that point. Cause if we don't know each other and we're trying to, I'm yelling at you in the scene and I need you to feel this it's not going to be that raw emotion. Um, so we had to sit down and have several talks. Me and Tyler, over this process, over these two years, have grown tremendously just, just, being, just being together. And it was crazy because it, it started off the first, we did the first scene and it started off in my room. And it was just like, that shows you how deep and like how intricate and just together we were through this whole process. I definitely want to say congratulations to y'all. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So, much. <laughs> so the, the release date, uh, tell us about the release date again. Tell us uh, what platforms they can find it on. Uh, we are looking for, at May. May is going to be the release month. We don't have the date. Okay. We, um, but we are definitely looking to release it on our own our own website, uh, www.loverboythemovie.com. And just, we didn't, we were going after the platform and we were going after the streaming service, but it was, it was mainly us in the beginning. So it's like, let's keep it us. Let's just make our own, let's make our own website and let's just put it on there. Cause it's, it's us. Let's keep it, let's keep it in the family. Let's, Let's just continue to grow throughout that, and let's show, let's show the streaming services. Let's show the world that we didn't need that. Like we, we didn't. We, we me and Tyler, we used the, we used the phrase, "We are gorilla." Like we are on ground with most of the stuff that we do. So it's like let's, 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 let's shake it up. Let's shake up the industry a little bit to where it's like, oh, these brothers is different. These cats is new. They, they, they're not, they're not trying. They're not looking for the the Netflix handout. They're not looking for the Hulu handout. They're not looking for the HBO Max handout. They they literally made their own website, put it on their own website, and they re reaped all the benefits from that. So it's like, when, when I tell you, when, when I tell you, we did, the budget was pizza and chicken. I'm never gonna lie and be like, it wasn't that. And that's the story that just gets you ignited. And it's just like, yo, they really did that. And that's what I want I want every little kid Every every person that wants to be a videographer, director, actor, yo, you can do it. And you don't have to go to Netflix. You don't have to do this with 
a, a, a big corporation. And that's really what I want to do is just shake up the whole industry when we drop it. And it's just like, oh, they did this and they didn't need us. They did this off pizza and chicken. Okay, let's throw them $30 million and let's see what they do with that. So it's like, it's, 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 it shows you just, it shows you what you can do on a limited resource. And I want everybody to, when they watch it, I want you to just love the story, but I also want you to be like, oh, I could do this. I Anything that I put my mind to, I can definitely do. And it's so positive, yo. It's just very, very, very positive. Yeah, I mean, shout out to $30 million, but I'll do it for some more pizza and chicken wings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, do it. I'll do it for some pizza and chicken wings any day. Any day. <laughs> Eat all day off that. But yeah, yeah right. no, nah, right. my follow up. My follow-up I wanted to take it into, I think, Praise, you kind of touched off it uh, a little bit, but we always like our, our guests to come on and drop some gems for people kind of, you know, in the same lane, following in some of the same footsteps. Uh, from each of you, like, what, what's your what's your number one tip on somebody who's out there, you know, has that dream, wants to be a creator, wants to make that content? What What's the number one tip that you give them kind of out of the gate, the, the gem that you're going to drop on? Never give up. Never, never, never give up. And I know it's I know you've heard it, but never give up. Yeah, never give up. There's some days where I did not want to film. I didn't want to I didn't want to film, but I got up and I filmed. There's some days where you don't want to go to the gym. I got up and went to the gym. It's it's always bettering you. So please, 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 please never give up. And do everything that you want to put your mind to. Never shy away from anything. And never doubt yourself. Just find your team. Y'all just know that y'all have one common goal and never give up. Please, please, please. Oh, yeah, man. I'll say, okay. I gotta, yeah, I got a couple of things, but um, one, first and foremost, first and foremost, um, solidarity with the mind always results in solidarity with the body. Your mind must be intact before you ever try to put those shoes on and step out here and do this. This is not something that is easy. This is not something for the faint heart, but it is something for the love of the heart and from the love of the mind and from the love of just the art itself. But the biggest thing I want everybody to take from this is that we did not do this alone. Um, my old African proverb is, you know, alone you can go fast, but together you will go far. And that's exactly what the city of Charlotte did for us. Like if it was never for the city of Charlotte, giving me mom upbringing, of course, New York giving him his, his upbringing, and um, just these cities just allowing us to be who we are and be the best of what we are and all the resources that we've had from Inspire the Fire to everyone, me being at Central Piedmont and from um, everyone, of course, Upward Bound, um, you know, LEAD, all the organizations that I've been a part of that have been helping us right now, it would have never got done in the first place. Of course, Ali, Enoch, Sierra, um, Mars, um, Pops, of course, D Rock, everybody, every single person, Miss Tangie, like every single person. This is ever, yeah, yeah, they're, they're the reason we, we we can name a fleet of people, you know, <laughs> our, our high school, <laughs> um, Mallet Creek, East Meg, man. Sh All I gotta say is that together, together, find those people that are going to help you. And at the end of the day, always be humble and always have the kindness of your heart to do what you need to do and never worry about the paper because understand that the money won't keep you there, but the love for it will. Definitely. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But thanks you for them gems. I needed those. I'll take all that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, but we used to do a fun fact game at the end of our um, interviews. So I know we were talking all about business, but it's a little fun, you know, fact. So we're going to ask both of y'all one question apiece. Y'all ready? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> okay. So mine is, if animals can talk, uh, what animal do you think would be the most annoying? And why? No, I'll go with these. <laughs> go ahead. I'll go with a, like a golden retriever or something. <laughs> I feel like those are <laughs> annoying dogs. I feel like golden retrievers are definitely annoying dogs. Yeah. I'll go with the. Well, why would you think they'd be so annoying? What do you think they'd say? I don't know. I feel like they would just bug you. Like, I feel like golden retrievers are already upbeat and big and just too much to handle. So I feel like they would already just be out the mouth, just yapping, just just doing just doing too much. I feel like that, that they will be just 
doing too much. I got you. I got you. Yeah. What I'm about you? The, I'm going with the hyena or, or the uh, snake, but yeah, the hyena <laughs> or the snake. Just one, because the hyena I already talked too much as it is. It's got one of the most annoying calls in the in the jungle. Um, for two, a hyena is very deceitful, and and you know what, hyena was the, was the main person up in um Lion King. They got the man's <laughs> scar. The scar. I was just gonna say that. So the hyenas, you're out of here. You're out of here. We don't like hyenas. <laughs> <laughs> so we got so we got the BBW uh golden retriever that invades your personal space and talk too much. And then we got the the hyena from your childhood that has tarnished their name in the jungle forever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Let's> go. <laughs> That's dope. I like that. Got to cut the clock. All right. So <laughs> here's my question. All right. So you for the next 6 months, you're going to be stuck on a deserted island. All right? So all you got is internet connection and you put there intentionally by some, you know, financier that, that kind of wants to test your, 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 you know, what you can do in the situation. What's the two things that you're going to take with you? I, again, deserted island, just the two of y'all, you got internet connection. Just the two of us? Yeah. A camera and a phone. <laughs> a camera, and a, a camera, camera and, a phone. and a phone. Okay. Why why just the camera and the phone? We did it off way less. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it is it is it with um us individually, us individually each getting two or both of us getting yeah. the same two? Yeah, nah. So he brought the camera and the phone, uh, because he said y'all, you know, that's you that's the tools y'all can get down with. What you bring? Oh yeah, I need unlimited batteries. <laughs> the, the camera batteries gonna go, you know, unlimited batteries. <laughs> that's full. And I also need um, I need, I need, uh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> a, uh, a, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah, a, um, water filter. Okay. Because <laughs> we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going to die off that salt water, brother. <laughs> we, we, we need a limited <laughs> battery a water filter. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 we can go hunting. We can go hunt and make spears and all that other type of stuff. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm glad you thought about the eating factor because I was definitely going to pick a boat as one of mine so we can get back and forth to get the food. But y'all going to hunt it up and uh, go fishing, I feel it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm We're going to make a rat. <laughs> All right. We got the phone. We're going to look up YouTube. How to how to make a rab, how to how to crack a coconut. We're going to be on the phone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I definitely want to say thanks for interviewing with us today. It's been a pleasure to get to know y'all journey and to hear about the film. I can't wait till it come out in May. Um, I'm so excited. I can't wait to watch it so I can get some reviews on it and everything. And um, y'all continue your journey. I wish y'all nothing but success for 2022. Um, Theo, anything else you want to say before we get off? Definitely, man. Appreciate y'all positivity. Uh, appreciate y'all for addressing some, uh, you know, some, some issues that we all go through and, and trying to bring some entertainment through it and hopefully they learn something from it. Before we get out of here real quick, shout out the website and your social media one more time for the people. The website for the, that the movie is going to be on is www.loverboythemovie.com. My Instagram is Praise McNeely, P-R-A-I-S-E-M-C-N-E-A-L-Y, no space, no uh, under tag. <laughs> so yeah. And shout out to Sadverse, that's the Music S D V R S E, and uh, Instagram for the movie is Loverboy the movie on Instagram. Yep. And my Whoa. Instagram else on all platforms is Tyler King J Jackson T Y L E R K I N G J A C E J A C K S O N. Thank y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Appreciate yeah. you both for, for, for your time. Yes, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. All, right. all right, peace. Ha, ha, ha.